18. Fully clothed. Very rich. In the showers at Sweet. Ram All right. Limp, flaxed, relaxed. I'll turn that down. Um, I'm gonna tweet it out real quick. Some good looking cowboys, their sense of dignity throb in heart. Cowboys out in the yard. Big bulging backpacks, ever so full of camping equipment. Complimentary shampoo in the showers at Ram Ranch. Big hard math problem like a burrito ram wanting to think about algebra. Big heart throb in comic books being written will be. Cowboys even dreaming about Batman in their sleep. Alright, I know this is an actual Ram Ranch, but Ram Ranch is banned on Twitch, unfortunately. Uh, so I thank everyone. I don't know who's watching, who's here. I'm here with Grant McDonald, muted on Discord at the moment. Um... We're going to be asking him questions, and we'll be taking live questions at the end. Uh, well, yeah, that's it. I'll mute myself, turn this off. Let's get this party started. Find them funny. Other people are going to find them funny. We're live. All right, I'll ping announcements. I'll tell them to just go in the interview waiting room. Um... Ask to be selected for questions. Um, awesome, thank yeah, you. We'll, 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 we'll slap for some. Alright, so shall All right. we get Hang started? The, I'll move to the waiting room and I'll be what, listening through Twitch. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so would you like to start off with the questions, Mr. Aaron? Okay, Aaron, uh, first of all, I just want to thank all my fans out there because, you know, I'm Absolutely. humbled and honored, you know, that my fans all over the world from Australia to, to Texas to, to all over the world, you know, that have had fun with my music. And that's number one. So if there's any questions out there or anything you guys want to ask, go for it. Yeah, I actually uh, kind of wanted to start off at the beginning. So I remember one time we were talking about your Scottish ancestor in the, the McDonald clan. So right. I kind of just wanted to ask you about that and pretty much like <clears throat> talk a little, about your, about, little bit about your history before we actually start getting into okay, like, your okay. life. Okay. okay, I've been to London many times, you know, as, as is the case. It's with, the, you know, my background, I was a multimillionaire in real estate. So I used to go over to London a lot with my friend who was a, like a billionaire real estate developer in office buildings. And we put a, an apartment complex together north of Toronto that were three apartment towers of 28 stories and two office towers down into the subway, which was a shopping center and everything. So I became a multimillionaire at 22 in real estate. So I'd be going over to London and Zurich, putting these big with my friend Peter, and uh, he was gay. He was my lover. So yep. I basically was in a financial position at that point in time worth uh, you know, like $185 million to $250 million. We had a condo worth a couple of million in Key Biscayne, Florida. I had a $7 million house in Rosedale. I go to Musea, Rodin, Paris, and Milan. I had my own shop, Grant Danielle Limited. So the fact of the matter is, you know, every time I go to Paris, I'd be inspired by Rodin and the thinker and the gates of hell. And Dante inspired Rodin to do the thinker and the gates of hell. So, you know, I always respected these brilliant, you know, creative minds, you know. So, gee whiz, so my back, I go back to Scotland. I've been to northern Scotland, to Glencoe, which is, you know, like north of Glasgow, Fort William. And that's where my ancestors lived. And what happened during King William of Orange, he wanted to undermine the power of the clans. So he sent Robert Campbell up to Glencoe, and they stayed there at the castle and were wined and dined. And in the wee hours of February 13th, 17, whatever, Robert Campbell and his soldiers awoke at 2 o'clock in the morning, per se, and slaughtered 48 MacDonald members of the family in the snow. 
So that was the Battle of Glencoe, the massacre of Glencoe. That to this day in Scotland, there's signs outside of pubs saying no Campbells or beggars allowed because Robert Campbell betrayed, you know, like the sociability of, of Scottish clans. So anyway, that just happens to represent a portion. And then when my family first came to Canada, we had 27,000 acres on Prince Edward Island, which was called Ile Saint-Jean. And my dad has been recently knighted by the president of France for fighting at Normandy to Berlin through the Battle of the Schlepp and Leopold Canal. And I've been to Berlin and the Black Forest and Baden-Baden and wherever. And my grandfather was a sergeant major at Vimy Ridge. But the fact of the matter is, so here I am. My dad was an alcoholic when I went to high school. So when I became wealthy in Toronto, I went back to Prince Edward Island. I got them a resort where he quit drinking. And then at that point, I had the opportunity to go to Hollywood. So I went out to Hollywood, gee whiz, you know, with wealth and, uh, you know, gee whiz, brand new Lincoln on the, su and, you know, like UCLA campus, Sunset Boulevard, Bel Air, Hollywood, and gee whiz, you know, met the Ringo at uh, the Rainbow and Sunset Boulevard, and uh, Ringo said he'd help me with the soundtrack for my films, and I met Gordon Lightfoot and, you know, various other powerful people. Gee, I was going down Sunset Boulevard one night in a white Cadillac with this kid named Michael, and he says, hey, you know, I know of a place we can go to. So, you know, we climbed to the window at his buddy's place, and we have an affair. And here is Elizabeth Taylor's son, <laughs> Michael Wiley Jr. <laughs> so, you know, Hollywood, it meant a lot to me because I worked on movie sets and, you know, so to finance my movies, I put this big oil deal together in New York, the Getty Reserve Acquisition, with reference to inflation in today's money, you know, like $4 billion. And then after Texaco took it over, took over Getty, it earned the shareholders $4 billion reserve did. So I saw this huge oil deal to come together in New York as an investment banker then my harvard undergrad presented my bill for a measly six million four hundred and forty thousand the gettys gave me like a david spade like and you are you know so the fact is yep. they stiffed yeah they stiffed me from but the fact is i went up to hollywood to put a creative project together and my first project was the getty hitler project about getty supporting hitler George Getty, the founder of Getty Oil Company, the great Oklahoman Irishman, died in the late 30s, but his wife, Sarah Reicher, was a German. <clears throat> Excuse me. John Paul Getty's mother was a German. So when Hitler was rising to power, they supported Hitler. They were shipping oil. They were bringing Nazis into his hotel pier in New York City. He had a file. He had a file for espionage because he was betraying the United States of America by bringing Nazis into New York City. And while you know, like the owners of art were going into the ovens, he was accumulating his Gainsborough and his Rembrandt and various other things. There's actually a a, a true story that happened at Baron Philip Rothschild's palace, where the Nazis took Baron Rothschild out of the palace at 3.30 in the afternoon. John Paul Getty was at the palace door at 5.28, wondering what was to be done with the furniture. So, that, that, yeah, so that's, that's, that's John Paul Getty. <laughs> and, and when he built his museum, as a matter of fact, as you know, like the lyrics for my first song was a billion. Yeah, a billion bucks. I heard the Gettys a billion bucks the way they treat me. It really sucks. And then at the end, it goes, while the corpses of World War II scream, J. Paul Getty, we while while while, while the Getty Museum sits atop Mount, the corpses of World War II scream, J. Paul Getty, we know. So the fact of the matter is that was my first song, A Billion Bucks, which later became four billion bucks because as inflation went, uh, I earned the bucks. So that was my first song. But ultimately, as I say, if it were not for the fact that I put that oil deal together in New York, I would never have written my first. So as I say to my mother and father, as my story starts off, the train clicked along in the darkness. And I went from Toronto out to Alberta, did my geological surveys, went back out to Hollywood, 
went to Denver and I had met a Harvard grad in Hall, Eric Hessler, who was with the U.S. Navy during World War II. And the fact is, Eric had a big mansion in Lake Oswego, Oregon. And, you know, he was Wayne Newton's lawyer from, from Las Vegas. So Eric put all my legal documents together for me, saw my merger go together, presented my bill, and that's what the Gettys did as inheritors. So here, billion-dollar inheritors, Gordon Getty and John Paul Getty II, who was a heroin addict in London, who's Mark Getty's father, who passed away, and that's where Mark Getty lives now, at the Wormsley Estate in Buckinghamshire, and I actually went north of London to Buckinghamshire right onto the estate bill, as I did at Gordon Getty's house in San Francisco. But the fact of the matter is, as I say to my mother and father, you know, I went out to Hollywood to get into the movie industry and to put a project together, and my oil deal in New York was my launching pad for my music. I reflect back with such satisfaction out of knowing that I put this big oil deal together, but it allowed me to launch my music career. So, you know, it, it opened the door for me. And, and just to kind of, you know, interject here, it was the rappers who opened the door for me in the music industry, excuse me, because it was rap. I earned the Gettys a billion bucks, the way they treat me. Really. So I owe so much to, to the hood, to the rap world to, to, to the black community to the brothers so they opened the door for me like Eminem so you know like I have to pay homage to to how I got here and you reflect I reflect back with such satisfaction and saying hey <laughs> hey Man, I got my songs out there about uh, Gavin Newsom legs in the air <laughs> so you know <laughs> yeah exactly and not only that, I went out to Hollywood, not for money. I went out for a creative project. And if you guys know anything about, like, the Bronfmans, Edgar Bronfman went out to Hollywood with, with his billions and lost the family fortune. Edgar Bronfman Jr. went out there flashing billions around, and he lost, uh, you know, Seagram's and Conoco Oil Company from the Bronfman family. He lost $12 billion. That's so, a lot. That's yeah, yeah. It is. yeah. So the fact of the matter is my, my principle here is if you don't go, if you don't go, if you don't enter the creative world backbone like a Tolkien or, or a J.K. Rowling with, 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 such, with such character, you know, which I'm trying to project. I'm not, I, listen, I'm, I, I can never say that I would ever come close to these characters. But I've learned in my life, you know, as a scorpion or as someone who, you know, appreciates what my father did for, for, for me, you know, fighting at Normandy and D-Day, you know, through Khan, the Battle of the Shut Leopold Canal, and my grandfather, you know, these characters, you know, that I you know, learn from, like Rodin did the thinker and the devotion of Dante and these characters who have left things in our lives, you know, whether it's Elton John or whether it's, you know, George Lucas or, or you know, as I say, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien, you know, with The Hobbit. So they've left, they've left masterpieces. But yeah. it's, not the, it's, not, it's not the masterpieces they've left. That's like I was in at the Rainbow and Sunset Boulevard having lunch, and who comes in but Ringo and his entourage, and they sit down in a booth. And if you saw like uh, Ozzy Osbourne's son Jack when they had that TV show, Jack would go to the Rainbow and the Roxy and Sunset Boulevard, you know, like and to the club and whatever. Well, that's where I was. I was at the Rainbow. But the fact is, and as Guns N' Roses did that video for November Rain. It shows the guy sitting at this booth with stained glass windows, and they show the sign Rainbow. Well, that's the Rainbow. <laughs> so I'm at the Rainbow and sits up all over having lunch, and who comes in but Ringo? And they sit down at one of these big booths with stained glass. So I go over to Ringo, and I say, Ringo, I hope I'm not imposing. I just want to compliment your genius on the White Album. And as you may know, like George Harrison's Wild My Guitar Gently Weeps comes from the White Album, Double Album, Green Apples. So I say, I'm going to UCLA and I'm working on a couple of scripts about Life Beyond Death, very Dante-esque. And he says, hey, lad, that's pretty amazing. So he says, hey, sit down. So I'm sitting with a beetle. 
How's that one? Isn't that nice? I remember you telling me about this story. Actually. I know, I know. I'm sitting with Ringo, a beetle. Like, you know, like you just can't use the word Ringo because he's a darn beetle. So that's how wonderful. One of the, one of the top selling bands of all time. Yeah. Exactly. But you know, you know what, the, you know, and, and, and now you reflect back and to say, oh, my God, George Harrison was the lead guitarist, you know, and then afterwards, George goes on to, to sell more than any of the single artists with, you know, My Sweet Lord and all those masterpieces that he did. But the fact is, you know, so here's Ringo. So, so he says, Grant, listen, if you need any help with the soundtrack for your movies, you get in touch with me, please. Isn't that something? Yes, well, that's incredible. A, a beetle, a not, beetle. Yeah, exactly. No, so no one the, gets opportunities like that like, exactly, every day. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So the character, the character that you see as you go through life, the characters you see, it's like the Hobbit, like when Gandalf and Bilbo and Frodo were going through the journey. They meet up with these characters, you know, at the Prancing Pony Inn and away in the corner who's sitting there watching them, you know, but the... You know the the prince or, or or you know the king himself. You know so he is that sometimes you know like these great people that that are in the world. The greatest of all are the least that you expect to be that way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's uh, what... generally, I was about to say a lot of characters that are made up by whether it's like an author, an author like a writer for a like screenplay. Usually, a lot of these characters are actually actually made from people either from their past or inspired from books or previous movies. Exactly, but <clears throat> excuse me. But ultimately, you know, I find that you know there's such wonderful people in the world, you know, and sometimes the greatest people of all are the ones that you least expect. You know, sometimes your expectations. I hate. I, I've had the good fortune of meeting some wonderful wonderful people throughout my life but the fact is you know like some of the greatest people of all are the greatest people of all because they reach out to other people so you know it's something you know like that i try to impart and i guess it's in my music too that you know like shucks luke you sure are hung you know <laughs> by reaching out and, and and going for fun you know like and, yeah. and try to try to give something back you know and saying be proud of who you are because you know and not only that angel and and all of the people you know like i've studied religion to such a degree that you know like i find you know that uh, just be proud of who you are and leviticus uh, is such an ancient uh, bunch of bs written in the torah that uh, were priestly rabbinical rules that said for the rabbis and priests do not sleep with boys that's basically what it's said and it's been taken out of context for so many years to harass the gay community with with hatred and BS. So for 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 a fourteen year old boys to be thrown out of the house by religious lunatics and they have no place to go, you know, uh, it is is disgraceful, you know, based upon you know all of this filthy religion. So yeah, you know, I'm up. reaching exactly. So I'm I'm reaching out to say, hey, be proud of who you are. This is who we are. So stand up and, and hold your head up high, you know, cowboys loving cowboys and, and the Nat Natalie loving Annie, you know, exactly. <laughs> so so that, that's the greatest message I think that I'm trying to impart with my music. So, uh, I, was thinking, loving... so I was thinking uh, maybe we should uh, start getting to questions from the <laughs> audience. Sure. So, uh, Rommel, you actually have a question? Yes, Grant? sir. Yeah. Okay. So, how many Ram Ranches do you plan on making, and what is your favorite Ram Ranch? Well, of course, the original one is my favorite, and then seven, you know, Ram Ranch under siege, under lockdown, That's US my Marines and <laughs> Raptors and helicopters and tractor, you were a naked tractor boys, and, you know, like, you know, like the Black Cock Gang and Grog Boy Evolution, and then, of course, 85 is what I... I won't get into why. <laughs> no, <laughs> when that <laughs> spacecraft pulls up and I start reading the name on the spacecraft, eighty-five is hilarious. <laughs> but, but you know, like, uh, hey, I'm I'm now I uh, uh, one o five comes out tomorrow. I've recorded one o five over the weekend. <laughs> one o four is already up at iTunes. One o five, one o five is coming out tomorrow. One o six is my next one. And the fact of the matter is, you know. Like, like as hundreds came about, 
of course my fan says oh we love seven you know like so i actually had uh 99 is 100 because it was similar to a seven so i changed it to the frat boys because you know like the frat jocks and the frat boys and pledge boys have been such a pivotal important part of my projects and music you know the frat boys you know like as i say to my fans <clears throat> excuse me the cowboys are the romantics you know yeah the cowboys put i'll, I'll push you up against the post and the horse burn and our horse <laughs> ho and our hearts collide big heart cock deep inside you know <laughs> yo <laughs> is, that that's the cowboys but the frat jocks you know with the big heart cocks you know like uh, on the floor you fucking whore head against the gonna ram this huge herd horse cock deep down your throat <laughs> you know that's the frat jocks <laughs> So the frat jocks are the wildest of all, the frat jocks. So I ended 100 with the frat jocks coming up to the cock ship, you know, because that's the fun. And, and <clears throat> excuse me, as I always try to do usually, and hopefully, you know, is have an erotic edge to my music. One of my fans, one of my guys once says, I can't go to sleep at night unless I listen to a Grant McDonald song. <laughs> <laughs> So the fact of the matter is, you know, that's what I love about, you know, you know, please sir, feed me more cum, you know, like, yo, <laughs> you know, like, like that erotic edge to the I, songs. Uh, yeah. And I, in, in, in answer to the question, so I'm now at 105, six, you know, so the fact is when I stop having fun with my music, then I, I, you know, hey, listen, I, as I said before the interview, I... I've got uh, 1,600 songs up at Spotify and iTunes. And as you know, whether it's oil rigger bull or whether it's, you know, meat cock or whether it's, you know, sucking cowboy, cock sucking cowboy, and all of those that came before the Ram Ranch continuation, then there's all kinds of wild names out there for sure. Camaro cowboy, uh, Corvette cowboy, Chevy cowboy, mm. suburban cowboy. You know, like there's all kinds of individual wild stud, you know, so there's all kinds of individual names out there. Yeah, so it's just hey, the Grant. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off, but uh okay. should we get to Rick the Colonel's question really quick? Sure. Hey Grant, uh, how are you how are you doing? Oh sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. On it's all good. Anyway, Grant, I wanted to ask you a question, and it's a bit of a personal one, too. Your music has helped me through rough days, man. Like, sometimes I come home from school and I feel like absolute shit, but then I listen to, like, fucking, like, 99 or, or like, 97 or, like, 34 or 42, and it just makes me feel so happy and you fucking cheer me up. What's your thoughts about uh, your music making people feel better and making their day that's exactly what I'm trying to do. And I'm so honored. Thank you that, you know, like you're having fun with this. As I was saying, you know, as we we're leading up to it, you know, like, uh, you know, when Spoonerism and, and, and Carl and, uh, you know, please sir, feed me more cum or, you know, <laughs> shucks, Luke, shucks, Luke, your cock is so to hurt. <laughs> you know, the fact that you can have some fun with this stuff. So what I'm basically doing is utilizing technology and the creative force and saying, let's go with this. You know, iTunes, I was in tonight, you know, like, you know, iTunes and Amazon and YouTube and Spotify are basically our friends out there that are saying, give us, I know. They're like, give us more, feed us more, Grant, feed us exactly, more. Exactly. Wait, man, they're having fun with it and saying, what is this guy going to release next, man? Fuck it. He's up with the cock ship. He's got grog boys. He's got the black cock gang. He's got 12-inch cocks. Heard his rocks. Like, what the hell's... What's... Yeah. What... Hey, hey, move over, Elon Musk. The cock ship is happening. Uh, <laughs> I, I, just need a, I just need a note. Like, the original the original songs are kind of... um. If you, if you actually listen to them, you can kind of, like understand but when you start like really getting into the songs it really gets really over the top and you start getting to like spacecrafts and is, is, is Elon wild, Musk really going to be in the, in the spacecraft yeah the cock ship and all of that stuff that you know for sure crazy if, yeah, if, yeah. if anyone has any questions go ahead and uh, just type them out in the chat and I'll relay them to Grant if it's yeah. in the Discord chat or the, hey, the thanks, chat. Th thanks for the questions. Can and I ask it in this voice channel? I do have a question. 
Sure. Absolutely. Oh, so how did you come up with the idea for like the spacecraft and the cockship and all that stuff? Like, where did that arise from? Well, Ram Ranch 59 is when they first went out to space. And the fact of the matter is, <clears throat> you can only do so much <laughs> at a ranch. You can, you know, as seven was a stretch, all of a sudden the helicopters and U.S. Marines and you, hey, Ram Ranch is under siege, under lockdown, you know. So the fact is, and not only that, I mean, you take a look at what Musk is doing up there, you know, and they're pushing to Mars and all of that space, you know, stuff that's happening. So I figured, hey well let's take the cowboys up to space and have some fun you know so you know it just kind of evolved that it gave so much a, 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 of a creative window you know like and you say holy hell and you know it it, it also motivates me to, to to add lyrics and start okay so you know like uh, here's chris pratt up there and here's uh, <laughs> elon musk getting fucked and here's you know uh, like a uh, sean mendes and justin bieber and fucking so you have a chance to, you know, go up there with, you know, oh, here's a load of frat boys. <laughs> oh, fuck, you know. Here's a and question from you... the chat. Uh, who is Sean meant sure. to represent in your work? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, Sean is a, is a real frat boy, and as was the evolution of, uh, you know, uh, 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 <laughs> the whole you know, the whole spectrum of the frat element came about from, from Sean, who's a real frat boy. So as uh, you know, like uh, the whole evolution came about. So you know, like yeah, that's 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 Sean. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so, we got a we got a question in chat from R Man Five Thousand. He was wondering what were you thinking when you made Ram Ranch Seventy Two. Ram Ranch Seventy Two. <laughs> yeah. And just, just, and just to add, you know, like, uh, you know, you so, so, so. Here I am, ninety-five, seventy-two, seventy-two was Prince of Piss, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so hey, listen, you know that. Do you know something? Sucking Cowboy was one of my songs. Uh, my horse just done got bit by a snake, and I got many a more mile to go. So the fact is, as was the case in the second, first World War, my, my grandfather was a sergeant major at Vimy. During the period that my grandfather got poisoned by mustard gas, they would urinate into a handkerchief and put it over their nose to kill the bacteria and kill the poison. So the yeah. fact is, Madonna, Madonna once said, she once said that urine uh like 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 has antiseptics in it that kills germs <laughs> so you know so in my song sucking cowboy uh, my horse just done got bit by a snake and i got many more miles to go so in my song i'm down biting out the poison from my horse's leg to save my horse so in the song along comes another cowboy and on zips his fly and he's pissing and pissing and pissing okay and he saves my horse's life and he saves my life. These cowboys keep coming along and unzipping their flies and pissing and pissing and pissing, okay? So the yeah. fact that, yeah, so the fact of the matter is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, piss contains antiseptics. So for, for all of these characters, and listen, you might have, you know, heard many years ago about the biker boys, you know, their initiation is, you know, yo, buddy, down on your knees, we're going to piss on you and initiate you, yo, yo, yo. Uh, I got a question from <laughs> Noah G23. He's wondering, where do you get all the, the moaning sounds for the, the background? <laughs> of your music hey listen i'm just pretty fortunate that i got some pretty impressed promiscuous uh, buddies <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey listen hey listen there's nothing there's nothing like uh recording the live because you may need them one day <laughs> yeah i've also got a question from razor of dong saying hey grant what would happen if a cowboy cowgirl showed up to ram ranch would you have to become a trap Hey, listen, do you know that as I stated, you know, like in Tyler's Big Cumcock, I did yeah. my first song about two lesbians, Natalie and Annie. And, and <clears throat> excuse me, it was a true story. Uh, you know, uh, Tyler got in touch, you know, and said, hey, man, our whole frat loves your music. Will you do a song for us, man? These are the guys. So I started doing Tyler's Big Cumcock. 
So then Natalie gets in touch with me and says, hey, I'm Tyler's bo- girlfriend, but I'm a lesbian, and I'm in love with my girlfriend, Annie. <laughs> So I change my song. I put Natalie, you know, I say something like, you know, oh, Tyler's in the frat, you know, sucking and sucking and sucking and feeding all his frat buddies loads and loads of cum. Tyler's big cum cock is erupting with cum. And his girlfriend, Natalie, loves her girlfriend, Annie, but the evil Catholic Church will not let her express her love. That's my lyrics, okay? Mm. So I feel like a... Oh, yeah. Go ahead, sorry. Okay, so that was basically my first, you know, like, uh, and then Natalie gets back to me later and says, "Grant, you don't know how beautiful that was because you, you know, d- you know, did something so so beautiful in my life, you know, like for Annie and I." So, hey, listen, you know, my cowboy friends up at Discord and all over says, "Hey, well, what about you know, like the lesbians?" Hey, and I just say, "Hey, well, let's just deal with the cowboys and cowboys for now." <laughs> I hey, let the a, les- yeah, let the lesbians put together their own ranch. <laughs> I actually got a question from Discord, and he's wondering, uh, do, you, do are your are your songs like the are they from a sample like the actual like beats and you know just pretty much like the instrumental are they I from stru- samples? I, and I, stru- not- I, I, hey, I structure my songs mm. as if I'm scoring a movie. It's like when I did, you know, like right. uh, Prince Harry butt fucked in Africa. I wanted certain drums at the beginning, yeah. so I structured them according to if I want a Pink Floyd song. I I bring in the string sections and all of that stuff, and or if I want a Tool song, I gotta make the drums better than what Danny would do, and you know, like so I structure them accordingly. So you know, like. As I alluded to, I'm just, we're just lucky. I'm just lucky that, the, you know, like the whole technological world is out there. So, you know, like it's just like, you know, scoring a movie. Yeah, we've got a question from uh, The Cold Chicken. If you could live in one song, what would it be? She was, I guess it would be Ram Ranch because it has brought us all together. But there's Water Polo Boy, as I've said. Water mm. Polo yeah, Boy. Yeah, because uh, I'll start to interrupt, but. From what I remember, that uh, when you were in UCLA, you'd watch like the the water polo boys, exactly the frat and boys, I find, exactly. And I find that if there's a song that I could put on repeat, <laughs> then it shows me that you know I like to hear it again and again and again per se because the music quality is there and the meaning from the lyrics. So I think you know of all of my songs, but hey, listen, a billion bucks and a, and Cadillac, you know, ultimately. The three songs that brought Ram Ranch about were Best Friend Jake, uh, uh, Lonesome Boy in Tennessee, and Cadillac Riding Cowboy. If it weren't for those three songs, Ram Ranch wouldn't have come about. Because as I've stated in a couple of interviews there, that, you know, after a billion bucks, my rap corporate song, Earn the Gettys a Billion Bucks, The Way They Treat Me, It Really Sucks, Mm. After my first song and all that Getty Hitler stuff, <clears throat> I just wanted to have some fun. So I decided, okay, I'm going to put together, you know, like a country song, you know, like, so I put together Best Friend Jake, used to go swimming in the lake, used to trade <laughs> on the Dow, used to have a sow and all that stuff, you know, but it was about two guys that went swimming in the lake. And Nashville yeah. wouldn't play it. Like, I've been to Nashville a couple of times. I've been to Memphis. I've been to New Orleans, Mardi Gras. As I said, you know, I had a couple of million dollar condo in Key Biscayne, you know, been to Texas lots, Houston and Dallas. So the fact is, I figured, okay, I'll do a country song, you know. So I did Best Friend Jake and they wouldn't play it because it was too gay, but they would take a donation to their church. How's that one? Yeah. Uh, so, question- oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Exactly. Exactly. So then, so then I put it, Lonesome Boy in Tennessee. Oh, hoping one day to be as good as Dolly or Brad Paisley. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lonesome boy in Tennessee, just visualizing this poor kid down in Nashville, and they won't play his music. Lonesome boy in Tennessee. So then my third song that I came out with, you know, was Cadillac Riding Cowboy. Gulfstream jet on the runway gets us where we want to go. Prevost and tractor trailers in tow. Basically to tell Nashville where to go. So... After I realized, after those three songs, that Nashville is homophobic, religious fuckheads, that I just took out a piece of paper and started writing 18 naked cowboys. 
<laughs> yeah. That's, that's, how that's came, amazing. That's how it came about. I have a question from so, King Dilf. Um, okay. Have you listened to Weasley Willis? Not, disti- not not distinctly, you know, like my my true artist, you know, that I have so much respect for a tool. I mean, Maynard with Pucifer and uh, Perfect Circle. I mean, Maynard to me is the epitome of brilliance. You know, of course, I'm a Metallica fan, you know, I've seen their last tour, you know, like, and of course, I've seen a Perfect Circle's last tour, you know, fuck the fuck the, you know, whatever, you know, so. And of course, I go back to Zeppelin and Pink Floyd. So when you can have that quality of, of drive, you know, like, and of course, look what Eminem has done, you know. So when you look at these cornerstone artists and say, okay, well, I've got to do better than that. I've got to, this song has got to be better than Tool. Mm. It's got to be better than what Maynard would do or Metallica. So it just drives you and, you know, like, as you push the buttons and say, okay, is this up there? And then my lyrics have got them you know just break windows instead of pushing envelopes you know so and as i say you know my my trademark is the erotic edge you know like fucking and fucking and fucking and sucking and sucking and sucking it's got to have that you know because that's what i stand for because it's it's opened the door it opened the door for me with the ram ranch and you know like the whole the whole representation of cowboys and cowboys you know Actually, I got a I got a question from Jabron out there. He's asking, uh, in print in the song Prince Harry, were the instrumentals in there inspired by Metallica? For sure, and you know that Prince Harry is such a melodic song that you know, like I've even had fans say, "Hey, that sounds like Sade," you know, "Sade," mm. you know, like it flows so beautifully, you know, like and you know that just happened to come about as a romantic song. When all of this other stuff, fist fucking Prince Harry, butt fucking <laughs> Prince Harry, butt fucked in Africa, you're like it's all such tongue in cheek. And of course, you know, like the whole tongue in cheek, you know, like theory runs, you know, rampant throughout all my most of my songs. And as I mentioned to Aaron earlier today, you know, like there's one particular CD that I have uh, that you know has three songs on it that to me. If I were to, to say, you know, like, and those three songs are Love, Cowboy, L-O-V-I-M, Love and Ya Cowboy, Cowboy and Love, Ya Cowboy. Like, those three songs that are on the beginning of that particular CD, like, I, like I put out 138 physical CDs at Amazon. So, <clears throat> so the fact is that those particular three songs together kind of encapsulate, you know, three songs that blow my mind. So sometimes, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes a song will go out there and then it will come back and you say, oh, my God, you know, like, whoa, you know, like th- there's so many Sean songs that of mm-hmm. late uh, of late that have been just, you know, like, <clears throat> excuse me, exactly. if, if it, like, like I can only imagine what. You know, Tool and you know Metallica. I can only imagine what Metallica and the guys, James Hetfield and the boys, think every time you know they perform. You know, trust I seek and I find in you. You know, like whoa. You know, or Tool. You know, like uh, gee whiz. You know, who are you to wave your finger? You must have been out of your head. You know, like masterpieces. You know, like so. And I'm not saying. Hey, exactly. And I'm not saying I'm anywhere near those guys, but to have my, you know, Ram Ranch, to have my jockstrap cowboys or or oil rig boy and and just to kind of say, you know, I'm just so happy you guys are having fun with this stuff, you know. Uh, I have a question oh. from Solar. <clears throat> He's asking if you're ever planning on touring. Hey, do you know, like I've been given the opportunity twice now to play uh, uh in new york city i've been you know offered austin texas and they say we'll set everything up for you you just show up and you know like i am kind of in in the 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 position now where i'm so happy to be able to record it's almost like a painter you know saying okay here's uh you know like a million tubes of paint here's three million canvases here's your brushes now go do your stuff you know so you kind of get into a mood and say, okay, let's do this, you know. 
So, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, it, it's a massive, hey, you know, like, and I kind of visualize that what I would like to do is to put together like a, like, like, like a, you know, gee whiz, a Bohemian Rhapsody in one location and <laughs> open it up. As a, as, a, as a show in one location, like with, with 18 naked cowboys, <laughs> you know, night after night. That, oh, held over. Ram Ranch held over by popular demand. <laughs> I've actually got a question from Clark's uh, Bleach. And he's asking, have you ever played Red Dead Redemption 1 or 2? <clears throat> excuse me no actually excuse me no i haven't but i have so much respect for the creators and not only that as you know a, a lot of my fans my my game boy fans are just avid redemption guys and you know i hear that gavin is in there and sean is in there all these characters are in there and you know a couple of my fans made you know videos that are up to hey but you, do you realize that the, that the actors worked on that production for three years live actors yeah this, so, that game was being produced for eight years <laughs> Exactly. So the fact is, as we speak, uh, Ram Ranch, the game is being made. And, you know, like if I come close to Red Dead Redemption, then I would be thrilled. So, you know, like, whoa. Yeah, uh, I also got a... I'll just take a look what we got in chat. Uh, there's, a, the there's, a, there's a person the in chat named Snowbear who's asking a few times if you find him attractive, Grant. He's in uh, yeah, he's this... this I've story. never seen him. I don't know. Gee whiz, uh, I, I do get his uh, texts uh, occasionally hmm. and, and his likes on my songs, so I, I love the guy and he's a sweet he's a guy, fan. so thank you for for sure. Absolutely. Uh... The true freshest prince wants to know, uh, how does he join the Cowboy Stud Club? Hey, will you just, you know, follow uh, uh, the whole production as it evolves up into space and there and back again, as Tolkien would say, and have fun <laughs> with the, and have fun with the production. Have fun with the music, and you are a part of it. You are already a part of it. <clears throat> Absolutely. And, and I'm honored. I'm honored. I'm the one who's honored. I'm the one who's humbled. Because, you know, like, uh, I think that the true artists who have worked in craft, you know, know that the fans who have reached out and uh, are having fun with, with, with this music is just, you know, gives me such great satisfaction and, and totally honored by you guys. Uh, I was actually wondering with Ram Ranch, is, are you ever going to start a, like a, kind of like a new, like a new series? So, Are like a, like a separate saga from Ram Ranch, well, if you ever well, kind of, well, like, well, run out of material. Fact, yeah, well, the fact is, the Grog Boys, you know, like, in the Black Cock Gang, and, you know, those elements have the opportunity to go out into a different spectrum, but, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, it's just the fact. I think, you know, that uh, it's like it's like George Lucas with Star Wars, or, or Lord of the Rings, or Harry Potter. Potter, you know, my fans have said to me so many times, you know, they've said, this is your Harry Potter. Yeah. So the fact is, you know, like, I, I am so honored and, and thrilled and happy that you guys are having fun with, like, with 80 naked cowboys, the beginning. So the fact is, all we can do together is to keep it going out there, and whether it's in space or whatever, and, and you know, laugh, laugh, and have fun. You know, like, yeah. whether it's, you know, please, sir, feed me more cum, you know? <laughs> you know? I've actually got a question in chat, and he wants to know, who are the 18 legendary cowboys? Do they, like, I suppose what he's asking is, uh, are those... Is the, the number just random, or have yeah. these people been inspired by other people it, in your it's life? Basically, listen, listen. If one original cowboy happened to exist, it was Luke. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Shocks, Luke. You sure are hung. Oh, I love so, that song. Yeah, that's that song's a it's, that song's one of our favorites. It's a classic. Yeah. Thank. you. Thank yeah. you, thank you. So, so I guess Luke was basically, you know, one of the first, you know, original cowboys per se. So, but the fact is, the figure eighteen just happened to come about randomly. Just I just visual, yeah, exactly. I just yeah. visualized eighteen naked cowboys in the showers and eighteen more out in the yard, <laughs> and shocks it grew to ninety, and now it's whatever. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> hey, I'm just thrilled. I'm just thrilled that you can laugh at this stuff and have some fun. You know, like whoa, fuck, <laughs> you know. Uh, I, yeah, I actually got a <laughs> question. Uh, what, are you ever gonna be uh, interested in making more trance themed songs like Oil Rigger Boy? A- any more what type songs? Uh, tra- you know, trance. Prince? So that's like a te- like you know uh, techno music. Oh, oh, hey, well, gee whiz, you must uh, admit that out of my 1,600 songs, there's lots of techno songs there. I, you know, one of my big fans is Pink Floyd, so you know, anytime yeah. I can bring, I anytime I can bring, <clears throat> excuse me, I guess that. he's, I guess he's um pointing towards like the, the instrumental for Oil Rigger Boy, something, something similar like that. Oh, oh, Oil Rigger Boy happens to be one of my favorite yeah. songs. Oh, uh, with a question, you know, like uh, as is water polo boys, just that it mm. water polo we're alluding to, you know, when I was at UCLA, I would go over by the pool between like near Sunset Boulevard, near the gates into Bel Air, by the pool, and the water polo boys would be jumping up and down. But it was a pivotal point in my life being there at UCLA, living with a professor from UCLA, putting this big oil deal together and having the opportunities that I had when I was out there. Right. So the fact is, when I do hear Water Polo Boy, then it just brings me back right there. Then, you know, when I had my dreams, I guess it would be, when I had my biggest dreams, it's like George Lucas or something, you know, like I've gone by Skywalker Ranch in California and looked up in the horizon and you see this massive like Cape Cod Palace, but then you see the buildings that are Skywalker Ranch where he put together Star Wars, you know. So the fact of the matter is, you know, like these characters, Look at J.K. Rowling. Look at the genius of J.K. Rowling with Harry Potter. So, I mean, she was once homeless. So for this lady to create Harry Potter is like, whoa, whoa what a master. I've, I've got a question from Hot Beverage, and he's asking, well, two questions. And his first one is, uh, have you ever heard of Primus or Les Claypool? Of course I've heard of Primus. Primus is like a major, <laughs> yo, Primus is brilliant. You know, that's like, uh, you know, gee whiz for sure. So, you know, like there's the tech wizards out there that have been around that have, you know, like put stuff together that is just total genius for sure, you know. Yeah, yeah. and his, uh, his second question is, uh, where can he start listening to your music? He's uh, never really listened to your music before. And he respects you a lot. Thank you. Thank you. YouTube is, is, you know, like the best. As you know now, YouTube has a music structure out like iTunes. But you can go to YouTube music up there and listen, you know. And, of course, there's standard YouTube, you know. Like, gee, you go to, to standard YouTube up there and there's, you know, gee whiz, uh, hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of my songs up there that are you can just click and listen to them for free you know gee whiz no problem and there's also a question uh will there be a ram will there be a ram ranch where the cowboys fuck the gettys for revenge hey listen you know at 24 uh that was asian andy's birthday and you know like there were a lot of uh corvette zr ones z06 into the getty museum that fucked it fuck. and you know gavin newsom's been fucked <laughs> yeah, gavin newsom's <laughs> legs in the air being fucked and fucked and fucked gavin newsom and listen you know gavin newsom <clears throat> excuse me just to explain if you haven't already heard through my interviews gavin newsom is the son of gordon getty's lawyer boyhood friend Judge Bill Newsom, uh, who passed away not too long ago, uh, you know, like it's Gavin Newsom's father. So Gordon Getty's been financing Gavin Newsom's political career since he was mayor of San Francisco, lieutenant governor, and now governor of California. And he's and Gordon Getty's biggest dream is for Gavin to be president. So you know, the way things are going, Gavin Newsom could be president of the United States in 2020. No, thank you. Yeah. I know, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, they owe me a hundred million or so. You know, hey, pay up, <laughs> or 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 your legs are gonna go higher. <laughs> uh, I got a I got a question from Colpun asking on uh, Cowboy Biss regards. He wants to know: Is there any significance to Prince Edward Island in your songs? Well, I was born there, so that's yeah. Uh, uh, 
major significance. Uh, you know, and I've got lots of songs. I was even thinking today, you know, someone said, well, you know, the last time I was up at Discord, they said, oh, what? you know, you've done so many songs about it everywhere else in the world. What about Canada? Hell, I've got Charlottetown Boy. I've got Bedeck Boy. I've got Cavendish Boy. I've got Trackety Beach Boy. I've got Tignish Boy. You know, I've got Summerside Boy. You know, I've got so many songs out about Prince Edward Island, let alone yeah. Toronto Boy. You know, like uh, Eleven was about Montreal. Uh, Halifax is definitely covered. Dalhousie. You know, like, like there. hey, I've covered Calgary, you know, so there's all kinds of songs. Of, hey, Lunenburg uh, Suck Boys, Newfie <laughs> Suck Boys, Newfie Fuck Boys. Man, <laughs> Canada, I assure you, Canada's covered. <laughs> Uh, Snowbear in chat says he loves your song, Looking for Gold, by the way. Oh, thank you. That's really sweet of you. Thank you. Looking for gold, you know, oh my God, at the end of the rainbow, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, there are songs, you know, someone said, you know, have you ever thought of doing, you know, songs? <laughs> it's wild. I said, I got all kinds of them out there, man. <laughs> you know, there's, there's all kinds of songs out there, you know, whoa, that are just, look, look at Time Machine time machine you know i want mm. to build myself a time machine so i can go back into time you know like gee and tell the ones i love them so, that i love them you know so so i mean time machine to me you know and, and of course you know unis and jack during that period then you know like so there's lots of them that <clears throat> excuse me so ironically check this out the, the, country musicians are famous for trying to put together songs that could be played at weddings so you know yeah here can you imagine playing ray and ranch at your wedding <laughs> <laughs> I'd pl I, that's something i'd actually do jockstrap cowboys <laughs> drink that piss drink that piss oh yeah uh, that's our guy we love it, our we love our new son-in-law he's the best <laughs> i gotta oh. i'm gonna really a question but uh Big Spank two on in chat says that um uh, your songs have brought tears to his eyes and Ram Ranch one is the best. He wants you to thank you. He says keep on going. Thank you. Yeah, but the irony is the tears that is brought to his eyes hopefully is from laughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey man, yeah, hey hey, I don't want to you know <laughs> claim responsibility for your <laughs> songs, man. My yeah. songs. Hey, but that's what I was just alluding. Too. like i did this song forever forever as if it would be a wedding song but then i i, I quickly switched back to my erotic trademark songs <laughs> because they're more fun they're more fun absolutely <laughs> huge heard cock heard is a rock you know you know like that my trademark songs are more fun for sure Prince Harry, bend over prince Harry, take this big heard cock you know uh Drink that there's cum, a, drink that There's cum. a question from the, the cold chicken. Is there a planned return or spin off spin off song for the Prince of Piss? Oh, it's possible because I'm looking right now to a possibly towards a biker song. I need some more leather in my music. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's possible for sure. Absolutely. Uh there's a hey, question for... from a typical mid. What gave you inspiration for Ram Ranch Southern? Ironically, <clears throat> excuse me, I was up at Steam speaking with the, one of my fans, and I had in mind the military. During that point, I had some military guys in my mind. So I was just in the process of laying down the tracks for seven. And excuse me, so here I was chatting with this guy who had a friend who was in the military, and I was thinking of the military. So, gee whiz, I just decided, okay, I'm going to start it off with the military. So, I just happened to open up the mic and Ram Ranch is under lockdown. Ram Ranch is under siege. Helicopters, raptor trucks. It's just all, the whole goddamn song just started. The Ram Ranch started blowing up. So, it just happened that way. Whoa. Ram Ranch is under siege, under lockdown. Helicopters, raptor trucks. Oh, oh, and you know, Ram Ranch Cowboys and uh, Naked uh, Tractor Boys and <laughs> Dog Boys and the Black Cock Gang and everybody just happened to show up <laughs> and they were all fucking, and the funny thing is, as I was promoting it, you know, like up at Twitter or whatever, I would copy paste and the headlines would be, 
U.S. Marines butt fucked at Ram Ranch by Ram Ranch <laughs> Cowboys. And, and, and at the beginning, too, it would be like uh, Ram Ranch under lockdown, under siege, U.S. <laughs> Marines butt fucked at <laughs> Holy fuck, fuck. I've actually, um, this oh. question's been asked a few times actually in chat, and we might as well just get out of the way. People, since there's a lot of crossover between Ram Ranch and you know, the Buddhism hotline, people keep asking if you're ever going to make another song about Jonathan Hills. It may we'll be, be the way. It may be because, you know, like, I have so much respect for the guy. Like, I've been mm. on his show twice and he's crapped yeah. on me. He stabbed me in the back both times. He yeah. shafted you know, he sets it up, you know, like a, a direct message. He'll be saying, Grant, come on in. We love you. You know, no problem. And then I get in there and he fucking goes for the juggler. You know? <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Like, what are you doing? Here I open up and I say, hey, Jonathan, I have so much respect for you. You're so brilliant. You're such a genius. Don't fucking call me that. <laughs> you no, know, he's, he's ready. He's ready to go for the juggler. Doesn't Yeah. <laughs> so I, the fact I just... is yeah yeah that that particular I, time that particular time he was saying oh you need shock therapy and all this shit like yeah, you gotta yeah, be joking that. you gotta be joking me you know and and here i go there because you know like i found that like the, the whole theory behind buddhism hotline and he's so 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 naive and so cute with the matthias and all his characters and you know all like it worked because it was so hilarious you know but then if <clears throat> excuse me and as i've said you know, in the direct message, you know, like, and I, I, I don't really care because I'm going to, you know, say it, you know, because he stabbed me in the back twice. But anyway, you know, like, I, I, I think so, you know, like, gee, when I did that one about Chicago at Grant Park, you know, and, and he's butt fucked, you know, <laughs> so, hey, I may take him up to a spaceship and, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny, but uh, I actually got a question, actually, uh, well, Hidden Valley Vic has a question to ask you. Yo. From in Discord. Yo. Yo, Grant, I've been a huge fan since 2013. I've Thank been a you, massive man. fan since Ram Ranch, the first one. Oh, uh, Jockstrap Cowboy. Cow Gavin. Camaro yeah, 12 inch, Cowboy. 12 inch, cock is, 12 inch Cock is one of my favorite songs oh, you've ever done. You. And that's thank one of my, you, the holy. best beats you've ever done. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, I was out in Halifax, and uh, Sean and I were having lunch, you know, by the water lobster and steak you know like and the waiter guy was there and i said yeah i i, I record music you know like and he says oh did, did you put anything out that i'm like no and i says and we're just getting up to leave the table and i says well i said i got one song called f-154 truck and i said and your, your butthole i'd love to fuck <laughs> <laughs> as I was walking away, as I was walking away, he just started laughing. He says, "Oh my god, that is so funny," you know. So that's exactly it, you know. Like when, when you know, like you guys are having fun with this music, you know. Like, please, sir, feed me more, come. Or, or, or then there's other songs that are kind of surfacing, like "Take Me Now, Bro," and "Have Your Way with Me." You know, when Yo, I put that rigor boy. Yeah, oil rigger boy. I love that song. You know, take off your hard hat and oil up that butthole. <laughs> Fuck you. Know, you know, <laughs> ten W thirty running down his leg. You know, <laughs> big hard cock. Fucking this oil so, rigger boy. So Grant, I had a my question for you is: Have you ever heard of a man named Chris Cantwell? Not distinctly, you know, like as I was alluding to, you know, Maynard with Tool, Perfect Circle, <laughs> you know, fucking, you know, Pucifer, that's my guy. And of course, James with, you know, uh, Metallic and Eminem, look what he's done, you know. So these are the characters that are my driving force, for sure. Yeah, but um, this guy, Christopher <laughs> Cantwell, he's he's the guy after Charlottesville that was known as a crying Nazi because he cried on camera about being arrested. Oh, and my God. he... He runs a radio show called The Radical Agenda, and I was I at I think it was early February. Yeah, early February. I had I got access to his website, and everything that goes up on his website is automatically sent out to thousands of people on his email list. So what I did was was one of the first things I did, and I put if you go to the channel Steam suggestions on the server. I put a web archive link of I've went on his site and I put Ram Ranch on there. Oh, oh Cowboy great. Cop. Thanks, man. And, Thank you. And it sent it out to thousands of people. <laughs> and he called, you know what he did? He got so mad that I did this that he called the FBI on me for oh posting Ram God. Ranch on his site. What he a nasty character. Oh, 
Gee whiz. Dude, he's hey, he's hey, a corn cob. Hey, listen, as you know, like, fuck, you know, I've got that. Well, Prince Harry, but fucked in Africa. Like, like, how far more can you go than that? You know, like, fist fucking Prince Harry. And 13 has got, you know, like, uh, Trump fucking Vladimir and Helsinki with the, with, with the KGB, you know, like, fuck. So, you know, if you don't, if you can't have a sense of humor in this world, then who the fuck are you? You know, like we got to have some fun. We got to have some fun with this technological wonderment called the internet. You know, so it's just like you know, uh, uh, I earn the Gettys four billion bucks, and then they they they, they screw me from my fee. You know, they screw me from my investment banking bill. <clears throat> Excuse me. So a billion bucks came about, but then came about the Getty Hitler opera, which goes something like you know, like yeah. the LA, the L.A. police are at the Getty Museum saying, you know, could all employees of the Getty Museum please line up against the wall? You're all under arrest. <laughs> No, they're all going to get fed loads and loads of cum. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but then, yeah, Grant, yeah, yeah, this yeah. guy, this guy hates cowboys, and he hates. Oh, yeah. he, he's very pro straighty. But look at this. Also in Steam suggestions, this is a picture he took years ago of him bottom texting his own butthole. Oh my god, that's that's Chris Cantwell right there because oh, he yeah. so, he's so, so, so anti cowboy so, so. that he's got to oh, do it yeah. to himself. Oh, thank you for doing that. And and then you know, like uh, at the Getty Museum, as it goes there, that song. Uh, uh, Mr. Kumo is is the chairman of the museum, so the song goes, uh, you know, Mr. Could, could, yeah, yeah, could all employees of the Getty Museum please line up against the wall? You're all under arrest. And they say, Mr. Kumo, Mr. Kumo, and then Mr. Kumo shot. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kumo is shot because he's supposed to line up against the wall and he's going for the door. So the LA police shoot Mr. Kumo. Fuck. Oh my God. Mr. Kumo, Mr. Kumo, Mr. Kumo's been shot. Oh, fuck. Oh my God. So, you know, like to add a bit of humor to, to, to kind of, yeah. you know, like a situation. Uh, Phil uh, Harvey has a question. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Go. Oh. Great. Hey, Hello. Yep. Are yep. You, you good? Hey, how's it going? Oh, right. listen, I'm honored by my fans. You, you fans, are my super cool fans, rock and rule the universe and hey. beyond. Hey, hey. I, honored, you know, honored. We, we, dude, we are glad to have you in our lives, man. Because honestly, I've been, uh, I've been down on the dumps lately, and you know, and just hearing your song literally just it turns that smile. <laughs> and, it, and it's all thanks to you, dude. Like, I'm not saying anything in like terms of think you think like oh my god dude i think Grant is like that big like i'm like your biggest fan and all that oh other thank stuff. you i'm honored that, is, that you honored, honored I've, been, man. I've been messaging you i like i know that you're a busy guy and i've been messaging you and all this hey well if you know if you know uh you know i always message my fans back whether it's discord or whether it's Twitter or where it is, because I appreciate you guys, the the techie boys, the game boys, all you guys that are oh, yeah. having fun, all you guys are having fun with that music out there. Whether it's oh, yeah. you know, please sir, feed me more cum. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Actually, uh, Gret, funny thing was that you know I got I got a couple cousins of mine that I have introduced to Ram Ranch. Well, one of my cousins actually knew about Ram Ranch, but like the other didn't. And when I introduced it to him, he literally was just like chilling out, like knowing, like, oh, oh my god, what the fuck am I listening to? <laughs> like, wait, I, I, know. I, I, yeah, I introduced him to the exactly, person. exactly. But that's the whole premise of it that that we're pushing the envelope out there through mm. creative technology and saying whatever the fuck we want to say right. and just letting it go. And not only that, you know, like iTunes and Spotify and all these tech you know, structures of Amazon and that, that, that are just reaching out and saying, give us more, give us exactly. more of what you got, man. We're, we're all going up together. You know, it, it's, um, it's yeah. just brilliant. Brilliant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, dude, like I've been listening to your songs, man. And you know, it's funny because when I messaged you, you, you probably got like, I could guarantee your inbox was, was slamming, but uh, I sent you a message actually that you made a song that, that hit me very hard and it was funny that it was uh, on bass so my real name is actually harry no oh joke. cool yeah it's actually harry and you made a song about that like prince okay. harry right right so so so, so 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 excuse me so when when you say that i released a song that really hit bass which one in particular like like, like many like you were talking about all oh, prince harry like oh, fuck <laughs> i forgot dude it's Fist kind of fucking him. Prince Harry, Prince Harry butt fucked in Africa. 
Prince Harry butt fucked in Africa. <laughs> and honestly, and honestly, it was funny because it's like you literally had like, like my name is that. It is like when you sing that, it's like, oh my god, dude, this is like. Oh yeah, you're like I've got about twelve Harry songs out, oh, you know, god. like, as yeah. some of them you're like uh, Harry, Harry, you know, like it mm-hmm. sounds. Sounds like Sade, you know, like all of a sudden this, uh, you know, flowing song comes out of a yeah. fucking Prince Harry, you know, like oh my, oh god, my bro. god, no, and oh, so much fun, uh, uh, yeah, dude. And so I, I heard that somebody asked about like if you were gonna do tours and whatnot. So how would you stage that? Is well, that- you know, as I say, you know, like I've gotten a, a couple of opportunities in New York City to play a club like Lady Gaga got her start at, you know, mm-hmm. as well as a, as a promoter in Austin, Texas, says, Grant, we'll stage everything. You just show up. <clears throat> so the fact of the matter is, you know, my visualization, if I can put together like a, like, it's almost like a, 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 you know, like what the, you know, she was one location opens up 18 naked cowboys and the whole fucking production is at one location and it just keeps playing there you know and it gives me the opportunity to start with a situation like that instead of you know traveling the world i play whether it's toronto or london england or where it might be you know yeah and and you know just start it off like that you know <clears throat> that that's the way i see it rather than you know going on the road with a bus and having your equipment and moving crap around, you know, like an accidents and insurance for buses and gasoline and, you know, all of that stuff open somewhere where, whether it's in Toronto, Canada, at a cool club with the visualization of being held over with, 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 a, with, a, so, you know, like, it's almost as if, uh, you know, Harry Potter opened live in Toronto or, or <laughs> Lord of the Rings, you know, like, so, so, gee, many years ago, a production called Hair opened in Toronto and they were all butt naked, you know? Yeah. So Hair opened with, with huge lineups down the goddamn street, you know, it was held over for years. So something like that, that you have the control over how good it's going to be, you know, with super cool guys. You know, come a flowing, come a flowing, come a flowing. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question actually... in uh, in chat. Uh, the person saying they pay money for streaming, uh, for streaming the music. Do you get money from the streaming services? Of course I do. Of course I do. And now YouTube is so respectable that you know whenever i release my songs they go up to youtube you know uh, as a, a single release which you see up there in topic or whatever so whenever i release a song it goes up there every time you know spotify is going into the millions or, yeah, at youtube or whatever i do get paid <clears throat> excuse me uh so the fact of the matter is you know but the, but listen as is the case I take great satisfaction out of my fans listening to my music out there for free. When I sell a t-shirt or sweatshirt, I don't make a penny on it. <clears throat> Excuse me, because the way I look at it, if one of my fans is going to wear my t-shirt, then I don't want to make any money. I'm honored that they wear my t-shirt. And I've come through this technological wonderment with you guys so if you guys are up there at youtube which you can you can listen to all my catalog basically up at youtube per se for free and that hey i'm happy i'm happy that you guys are having fun with my music because as is the case as i said i went to hollywood you know worth the 200 million dollars i'm not in it for the money i'm in it for fun satisfaction and the wonderment of putting a song out there that blows my mind so whether it's Ram Ranch 1 or Ram Ranch 7 or 85 or Oil Rigger Boy or Water Polo, then, you know, I'm thrilled that I'm able to be where I am in my life right now. So yeah. I'm honored. I'm honored by, by my fans so, that you guys are having fun with this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like, yeah, you know, like- please, sir, please, sir, feed me more coffee, you know. <laughs> The, you know, shucks, Luke, you sure are hung. Cocks so big and so hard. <laughs> you know, fuck. You know, like, I'm just happy that you guys are laughing and smiling and having fun with this stuff, you know? 
and holding your head up for who you are. Because it ain't no comedy, <clears throat> excuse me, it ain't no comedy festival when it comes down to, to being proud of who you are and reaching out and whether it's your cowboy buddy and you hold him in your arms and whisper in, your, in his ear that you love him and that you want to be with him forevermore or her forevermore, then that's number one. That's number one. Yeah. Actually, uh, I dragged uh, Bona Patrol Biff in to ask a question. Excuse me. It's Cowboy Biff. How you doing, man? Oh, Cowboy Biff. I'm honored by you, man. You know, like, these are the true fans. These are the true guys that have been with me from Steam before Discord. And the guys (laughs) that have been with me from Twitter. And the guys that have been with me from Facebook. And the guys that have been with me from, you know, like, YouTube when my stuff first went up there. Whether it was 18 naked cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch and jock strap <laughs> cowboys and Camaro cowboys and space cowboys, and, you know. Camaro so, cowboy, man. What a classic. Hey man, hey, man, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate my fans that are having fun with this music. That, you know, like, I can only imagine what Tolkien, and, you know, I tell my fans that J.R.R. Tolkien wrote Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit to entertain his grandchildren when his son was flying with the RAF against the Luftwaffe. So how heavy is that one? Amazing. Killing those Nazi boys. I know, I know. So he put together lord of the rings and the hobbit to entertain his grandchildren while his son was flying with the raf against the luftwaffe that is impressive i know i know i know so that's the way i look at it i've got my project i've got my project to stand up for who we are and if we can have some erotic fun along the way to say hey bend over and take this big hard cock deeper, deeper, deeper. Then so be it. <laughs> You're darn tootin', you know, to reach out and hold your buddy in, in your arms and whisper in his ear that you love him and you want to be with him forevermore. Now down in the floor. Now down in the floor, you fucking whore. <laughs> Get him in the barn. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, Grant, you my real post, name. Push you up against the post and the horse burn. <laughs> Absolutely. So My real you know, name, oh sorry. Okay. I was gonna say I actually was named after um, a famous cowboy. I can't say which. It's, I like to keep a low profile, but. Cool. Yeah. Roy, um, hey, hey, your name is Roy Rod. <laughs> I, I sent you some funny pictures of me on Steam, but I was gonna ask you something. Sure. I remember um, one of the earlier ones, Ram Ranch Ten, I think. Okay. Where the cowboys went to Prince Edward Island. Right. I was wondering what the significance of Prince Edward Island was. Well, I was born there. I was born in Summerside. So, oh, uh, no kidding. Know, yeah, my dad was recently knighted by the president of France for fighting at Normandy and D-Day through Caen, the Battle of the Schlet Leopold Canal to Berlin. And Amazing. he's going, yeah, yeah, he's uh, got a huge medal that he got from the president. My dad is still alive, my mom. And uh, dad, uh, is, his birthday is next week. And the fact of the matter is, I've been to Berlin, I've been to Baden-Baden, and down the Rhine, and to Hamburg, and to Paris many times. And, you know, the great soldiers that have stood up with such courage are, are absolutely amazing. And, and this is where I've learned a lot of character, because these great soldiers are so humble. Yeah, they are. Oh, my God, my father, <clears throat> excuse me, my father is just, you know, and same with my grandfather, was a sergeant major at Vimy Ridge, and these guys went through so much over there, you know, for our freedom. So this is what I embrace now, is my creative freedom to, 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 to write my lyrics and to produce and to put my music out there the way I want to. So this is what they fought for. They fought for our freedom. So, you know, yeah. And, and, and our dignity. And as I said at the start of this interview, <clears throat> excuse me, my, my, you know, uh, religious research back into Leviticus where the, it was rabbinical priestly rules that stated that the priests and rabbis were not supposed to sleep with the boys. And the fact of the matter is it's been taken out of context for 5,760 years since the Torah that we've been harassed with BS. So, you know, stand tall who, with, you know, who you are and be proud. Because we were born yeah. this way, and all that bullshit religion. That, as a matter of fact, Einstein said, he said, he as a Jew is not chosen or better than anyone else. And he said, the Bible is nothing but a book of fables. 
Einstein. Yeah, yeah that's not yeah. just uh, that's true. Because uh, how have I so, how have so, I've so, seen so, it? So, so when I was going to UCLA, my professor was Jewish, and we would go to the synagogue in Beverly Hills, and he knew that the Likud and the Orthodox Jews were nothing but nuts, wackos crazed idiots and when you see religious lunatics try to manipulate our lives then you know for, for us to stand up and say hey this is who we are and we're proud of who we are <clears throat> me. so that's I think well, i'd say it's just like a pro problem in society in general where people just kind of try and control the people's lives there's no question but when then then, yeah. then when you research the torah and find out what started this leviticus 22 that stated categorically that it's priestly and rabbinical rules do not sleep with like kind because mm. it will be a sin if you start it's like you know if if, if the rabbis and priests are sleeping with, you know 10 year old boys that's right. not what happened so the fact is it's been taken out of context since the day of the torah and like five thousand. 728 years or whatever you know we've been harassed and ridiculed and and you know 16 year old boys have been thrown out on the street because of religious lunatic parents you know so you know the fact is we put up with too much of this for too long and it, it, it goes on it goes on all the time uh i was just From actually i was just one for like a good kind of a question to go off on to since you've gone now Ram Ranch 100 has came out recently. What is, is there a, like, what is the future for Ram Ranch? Is it going to go over <sighs> 200 or? Well, as you know, I've released uh, 103 is up at iTunes today. 104 goes up tomorrow. 105, I've already recorded yesterday. And I will hopefully be recording 106 next week. And as I stated, you know, when I stop having fun, Gee, yeah. we're up at the we're up at the we're up at the cock ship. The black cock gang <laughs> are, are pulling up. But uh, Elon Musk is getting fucked. Chris Pratt, Justin Bieber, Sean Mendes, like Prince Harry and Nick Jonas. I mean, who the yeah. hell is next? I, I feel like um, uh, I feel like Prince Harry's this... fucking sheep in Scotland. Like, what what's next? <laughs> I feel like I feel like Ram Ranch in space has kind of just like. It hasn't hit the climax. It's kind of like all the characters have been finally oh, there's like, no question. brought there's together. No question. As a matter of fact, you know, like uh, I, I, it's I'm like a, a yeah, exactly. It's, I'm a bit, I'm, not, I'm a bit reluctant to bring in space yeah. uh, aliens because that'll take it too far out. But I'm just looking to frat jocks and cowboys. Is how I see it so far with all with all the spacecrafts pulling up. It's kind of like the it's kind of like the start of like Lord of the Rings. Exactly. You know? Anything's got, possible. We, Exactly. You know, we got the we got the fellowship coming together, and then we're Whoa, then for sure. Are gonna Absolutely, really and not only, that, not only that, the cock ship and the starship, and and you know all the other ones are <laughs> pulling up. And yeah. Here, here, here. You know, like a hundred Ram Ranch, a hundred was filled with frat jocks. You know, with big old <laughs> cocks. You know, so it's just, and not only that. Here's Elon Musk up at the space station this weekend, and they're up in Mars, and he wants to go up to the moon. You know, the, so it can only just keep going because it's fun. It's fun. That's the most important thing. And then, of course, occasionally I check back at the ranch, and all the Ram Ranch cowboys are getting fucked by the Black Hawk Gang, U.S. Marines. Yo. What is Yo. your question? Uh, why does this, why does Grant's mic quality change on every Ram Ranch? Well, because you know, like. Uh, what I do, I structure my songs as if I'm scoring a movie and some of them change based upon, you know, whether Sean is moaning and groaning, whether Sean is oinking and oinking, and whether Sean is begging and begging, or what it's about, you know, like, it depends on the premise. It depends on the premise of the song, you know, like whether it's a Pink Floyd song or Zeppelin or Tool or Metallica or whatever, you know, like uh, visualization, whatever. Depends on the visualization of the scene, you know. I guess, I guess, deep down within my heart, I went to UCLA to get in the movie industry, and as was the case, you know, like with the Billion Bucks or or Best Friend Jake or Cadillac Riding Cowboy, per se, or whether it was Ram Ranch. It's it's basically a visualization of of, of a film, you know. Yeah, because I, I 
it, I kind of feel like with your songs, it depends what like the song's about and what's going on, and that kind of like sets a tone for what fil- like what filters and what mi- microphone volume. Pretty much all the production stuff is just based absolutely, on absolutely, absolutely. And and you know, like sometimes you know, like uh, it's almost like you go back to to certain you know errors, you know, like and that scratchiness on 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 you know the record, you know, like you remember things like that, you know. So <clears throat> and then you know, like it just depends how many helicopters are involved. <laughs> Or how many how many frat jocks are are involved, you know, or where the scene might be, or how many, you know, how, it just depends how far in the air Gavin Newsom's legs are. <laughs> Gavin Newsom's legs in the air, begging for more and more and more. <laughs> Fuck, big whore. <laughs> uh, there's actually a, a question in chat. Ah. Uh... Would you want someone to make a real Ram Ranch film? Hey, listen, I've got 358 DVDs up at Amazon. <clears throat> I have a six-disc Ram Ranch. I have a six-disc Sean. I have a two-disc Cowboy. I have, you know, everything from cocksucking Cowboy to Oil Rigger Boy to Huge Cock to Dalhousie Boys, Kershaw fucking Sean, Camaro Cowboy. Wild Cowboy, Biker Cock, Chevy Cowboy, Bronco Boy, Preppy Cowboy. Uh, I, I suppose uh, he's asking, um, like, would you want a like a movie about Ram Ranch, like a hour thirty to two hour movie? You no, know, hey, like a, <clears throat> a co- complicated okay. question, pretty vague, but yeah, well, uh, you just tell yeah. him I have th- I have three hundred and fifty eight DVDs up at Amazon. Right. Films. I have uh, a six six disc six disc Ram Ranch film. We got a, yeah, we got a question in chat asking where'd you get the idea of the the Black Cock Gang? Well, you know, ultimately, I owe the Black community so much because my first song, A Billion Bucks, was rap. If it weren't for the rappers, I would not be in the music industry because my first song was I earned the Gettys a billion bucks. The way they treat me, it really sucks. You know, so rap opened the door for me as did it, it, it might have opened the door for Eminem and the Beastie Boys. So rap came about by the black community. The early rappers who were the first rappers opened up the door for for my music career. So I owe the black community so much. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when the, when rap started in Harlem, South Bronx, it, in the playgrounds when they were scratching records where it was Curtis Blow and the Breaks or MC and Public Enemy, Chuck D and Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five and, and, you know, Run DMC. You know, when these guys started rapping and they, as a matter of fact, I, as I say to a lot of my fans out there, you know, like the, one of the first rappers was Cassius Clay. <clears throat> Cassius Clay came out with that line, you know, or oh, I, I, I fly like a butterfly and sting like a bee. You know, he was laying yeah. down. Yeah, he was laying down rap. So the fact is, these early rappers gave, you know, poets, poets, the legitimacy to be recording artists. So, mm. so, so, you know, like, as was the case, I've always been a, a musician deep in my heart but you try to put together a, a dark side of the moon or stairway to heaven and you may never ever be satisfied with what you're doing or ever attain 10 percent or one percent of that level so when rap came about it almost legitimized your creative force yeah so when i started writing I heard the Gettys a billion bucks. The way they treat me really sucks. When I recorded my first song, I felt I had a song. I had a song I was proud of, you know. And not only that, I put this big oil deal together in New York for four billion. I earned the Gettys four billion bucks. They're stiffing me for my fee. And as I said, I went out to Hollywood not for money, but a creative project, and happened to put this big oil deal together in New York. And then it became it, it gave me my first song. So I so the black community opened the door for me. Yeah. So the black cock game came about and I have nothing but respect for these super cool black ultra cool dudes, man. And you know, for them to enter and and it 
allows the whole premise of, you know, here's 18 naked cowboys in the showers, and all of a sudden the black cock gang <laughs> are rocking <laughs> their asses. <laughs> so I Sorry to interrupt, Grant, but okay. uh, someone in chat was wondering if you ever considered putting your music on vinyl. Yeah, I certainly records. have. I certainly have, and, and, you know, I'm visualizing definitely like Ram Ranch. <laughs> the CD on vinyl would be just such a thrill to hold in my hands because yeah. you have a you because you have a larger you have a larger art canvas to work with. You have that album cover. So yeah, you know, ho holding holding a record is really satisfying. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Like 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 you've got to pay tribute, like the Rolling Stones with that zipper, you know. Yeah. Sticky fingers, you know, like and and definitely the white album from the Beatles, you know. Which uh, here I'm sitting with Ringo at the Rainbow and Sunset Boulevard, chatting about his white album, you know. Where where while my while my guitar gently weeps comes from with George Harrison, so you know there's no question that the romanticism of a vinyl record is there, but you know like as you guys are you know we're technological you know techie boys who yeah. love pushing buttons and you know like as is the case right now you know like I see my songs going up there within hours theoretically of the release to spotify and youtube and you know yo 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 across the board you know so there's no question that technology has allowed us to have things downloaded instantly within hours of release so for you know like things to go through the mail and to arrive and you got this and that there's no question that it has its romantic overtones which is beautiful and i certainly hope to you know pick and choose several soon to release some vinyl as as is, as is the case you know my game you know like but i'm just happy with what i have. oh yeah someone's asking i was asking the discord how's the progress of the ram ranch game going so far? oh it's it's progressing you know like the fact of the matter is it's just like red dead redemption it took three years of live actors to put that thing together so I just don't want some robotic, mm. you know, characters in the shower. This has got to be live. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This has got this has got to be live action, like uh, Nick Jonas. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll we we'll, we'll zoom in on Nick Jonas. Okay, Nick, could you get your cock a bit harder? We're gonna do a close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this... Absolutely, that's the level that's got to be. You know. Uh, yeah, we'll do a few a question. more questions, and then we'll have one more uh, secret thing we'll do at the end of the show. Uh, Great. Someone's, someone's asking in the chat, uh, will you ever do more emotional songs like Broken Hearted? Well, you know, it's a period that I went through, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, and, uh, you know, ironically enough, Maxim turned out to be you know like this character from over in amsterdam and, and over around there i met them you know like on facebook and you know like all of a sudden you know like whoa here i'm writing these romantic songs to this guy you know oh yeah okay uh, uh, i'll take the castle in scotland and you take the island in fucking italy <laughs> like, oh, jesus christ here we are uh, you know i'm structuring all these romantic songs and at night i just almost cry in my pillow man <laughs> fuck uh, so wow. so and not only that you got to realize that i have some songs out there man you know those cowboy songs <laughs> we you know, there's one of them uh, this guy's in the barn, you know, like broken hearted. His lover, just his cowboy friend leaves the barn and his shadow is still on the wall. <laughs> you know, like, whoa, okay. <laughs> you know, and then another one, this cowboy's out by the fire, you know, like, and uh, he goes to sleep and he dreams that he and his buddy that he broke up with are still together and he wakes to find he's all alone, you know. So there's no question that. These, these heartbreak songs can be done because I've got a lot of them out there during that period. But I find that the, the most fun right now is, you know, like uh, on the floor, you fucking whore, <laughs> head against the bed, <laughs> you know. You know, my fans are having more fun right now with my wild songs, you know. Please, sir, feed me more cum, you know, like, fuck. Uh, people, there's a question in Discord, and they're wondering, uh, what sound what sound mixer did you use back in the day and uh, do you use anything different right now 
So I guess production, you know, what you use to produce your songs. Like, yeah, I've certainly upgraded so much, yeah. you know, but the fact is, <clears throat> it still comes down to, you know, like uh, I try to write my lyrics that I've got a little bit of a quality, you know, green light before I push record and I've got something that yeah. w w would be better than Tool or better than what Maynard could do or James from Metallica. So, you know, like I want to impress myself enough to know that, you know, like I've got I've got to put it out that it, it uh, you know, like uh, look, it, it, it impresses my fans. Fuck. Mm -hmm. My fans expect it to be good, you know? So I'm honored by that. I'm I'm honored by my fans, you know, for sure. Because... Uh, I a, yeah, I got a question in chat, and they're asking, will there be any new characters upcoming in the Ram Ranch? Absolutely, universe? absolutely. Like, you know, I just have fun by introducing, like, whether it was the Grog Boys or whether it was the Black Cock Gang or, you know, those different elements that do come aboard this, the cock ship or whatever, you know. So, absolutely. So, you know, I yeah. think there, there, there will be about 20 or 30 new spectrums happening, characters, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be fun. Thank right. you. I have I have one last question before we uh, do our, our, our secret. Then. Um, now, I, too, like penis, as you do as well. Now, what is your favorite kind of penis? Well, you know, she was, I'm not, uh, you know, circumcised. So the fact of the matter is, as medical scientists have now proven, kids that have been circumcised lose about 17% of their sexual feelings. So I don't feel that, you know, and, and the irony is, you know, like, oh, gee, if, uh, you know, these people are chosen, gee, isn't it a shame that their baby has a malfunction, a recall? What, the, didn't they get the memo, you know, that's the way they're supposed to be born, you know? So the fact of the matter is, hey, I just love cool guys, you know, mm -hmm. I'm more qualitative, <clears throat> excuse me, careful, you know, and, you know, she was, I, I just, you know, love beautiful, cool, sweet boys that, you know, of our age, 18 plus, 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 this ain't no, you know, this is an adult project, so, you know. But, the, you know, I just love to see cool guys that fall in love with each other and express their feelings and stand up together for who they are, for sure. And girls, yeah. too. That's yeah, very I sweet. Just like to, I just like to know oh, I'm on the second size, too. Angel. Sweet. <laughs> Pardon? I'm on the second size, too. So hey, like well, that's good. That. That's good. Be proud that you aren't. Because, as I say, the doctors are now saying, hey, if you're circumcised, you've lost a minimum of 17% of your your sexual feelings. So your mummy, hey, I, I jokingly say that, the, what, whatever, you know, if, yeah. if that's the way it is. But hey, guys, you know, are, are, are still beautiful all the way around, for sure. So we're going to be doing a giveaway. If you want, is it a shirt, correct? Hey, uh, listen, 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 I think it's oh, better CD. if it's a CD because I, I can autograph yeah, CD. CD. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I will, I, I'll autograph it and mail it anywhere in the world. There we go. Autographed CD. Uh, if you want to enter in the giveaway, all you got to do is uh, copy that, paste it, or just type it out yourself in chat. And, uh, okay, we'll I'll, it... I'll... Yes. Okay, so you're going to pick one winner there and yes. I'll uh, make a note of the address. Yes. The autograph and mail it out for sure. No problem. We will uh, relay you the uh, the information. Absolutely. Great. As I say, I'm just, you know, thrilled, honored by my fans that, you know, like you're all having fun with the music out there because, you know, and take what we are. Gee whiz, you know, just don't hold back. If you love somebody, mm -hmm. whisper in their, in their ear that you want to be with them forever more and just have fun, you know, gee whiz, for sure respectable yeah we'll, we'll give it a minute or two as people are uh, still putting in chat yeah we'll give people a minute i suppose we'll uh, we just wait for people to get their opportunity to hey for sure uh i'll just check if there's any, anyone that has any more questions and aaron you can just send me an address in Australia, and I'll, I'll do the same for you because I appreciate the interview. And you know, you. even even Angel, you can forward or not. Thank you, appreciate it. Hey, for sure. Hey, uh, like that's actually well. I guess while we're waiting, there's actually a question. Uh, what inspired your love for music? 
Pardon? Uh, when you're growing up, what inspired your love for music? Hey, well, when I grew up, my grandfather played the fiddle and he played Orange Blossoms, and my aunt would be on the piano or organ, and I grew up with country music. You know, music was always important to me. Gee, it wasn't yeah. always an outlet, whether it was The Doors or Zeppelin or Pink Floyd or now Eminem and Metallica and, and Tool. So music has always been, you know, just over the top, whether it's Elton John or, or you know, Bruce Springsteen or, or look, look what country music has given to, you know, like uh, all, all across the, I mean, to, to create something like Stairway to Heaven or, or Elton John, you know. I mean, it you know, and then to have the opportunity to do it is just so gratifying. And you have my fans laughing and having fun with it. You yeah. know, I think that's that, that's the best. Gee whiz, you know, like a gee whiz. As a matter of fact, just just to kind of you know add a little note to this, you know, my mother, when you know when I my music was progressing, that's when I was recording "Bucking Cowboy" with a B. Bucking cowboy. I'm the bucking cowboy, bucking the bucking the bucking all day. And yeah. my mother said, you know, are you sure that word's bucking? <laughs> uh, by the way, I just like to note for people that are watching that uh, if you do win, I will need a relay your actually like postal address. So if you're not comfortable with like giving me a, your address, you pro probably shouldn't uh, just bother entering. <laughs> all right. This is a disclaimer. Oh, we will... oh, oh, for sure. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a potential winner's got to submit their address because otherwise yep. they can't yeah. receive it. There's no question. Otherwise, yeah. you can't send it to them. All right, boys, here yep. we go. Got to roll it. Good luck. Okay, so 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 what I was going to say there with reference to my mother and and their song Bucking. My my comment to my mother was, "Don't you realize that Johnny Cash once released a song with the lyrics, I just shot a man to watch him die. And I said, so, gee whiz, you know, like, I, I, why should I feel guilty about the lyrics that I'm writing, whether it's about two cowboys falling in love with each other, you know? All right, well, we have the winner. Congrats to a cool pun. Cool. Uh, message me here, Aaron. You're, you're a... Uh address and we'll get that set up for you <clears throat> we are we were for giving sure. away a signed cd of ram ranch of that ram i'll mail ranch. anywhere in the world yeah I'll, I'll, I'll send it out anywhere in the world awesome well thank you for uh letting us interview you grant Oh, gee whiz, I'm honored. I'm honored, angel gee whiz uh, you know it just gives me so much happiness that you're you can have some fun with you know the music out there and, uh, you know, Aaron and uh, G. Evan and Connor and all the tech boys up at Discord have been so brilliant. And, uh, okay, so is Aaron uh, there? Yeah, i just like to say before we uh, end this, is anyone you want to, like, shout out? Any any fans you want to shout out? Hey, or, for like... sure. I, I want to express my appreciation to Asian Andy and to, to you know, Ice Poseidon, who, you know, have stood... I'd gone to, you know, like that tech uh, convention and Asian Andy rec, you know, put put in, you know, could you please play Ram Ranch? And it's over the PA, you know, ice <laughs> side, you know, and, and going to the gay clubs with their RV. And, you know, like, <laughs> it means so much to me, you know, because I, I know how hard they work for, you know, their position on the Internet and this whole technological journey that we're on together. Yeah. So for my so for my fans to you know listen to my music out there and as I said, I'm just honored and humbled that you guys are having fun with my music you know please sir, feed me more cum <laughs> you know <laughs> like, I just, like but the... Chuck's Luke you sure are hung <laughs> if if uh, anyone missed if anyone had a question and I missed it Grant's like Grant is a, like really open to answer your questions absolutely by like outside so if you, you can just message him whether it's like on steam or you can just tweet it in or absolutely and if you do happen to upload this interview up to youtube then yeah, i'll answer the questions up there I'll, I'll answer questions up in the youtube site when this goes up there if somebody wants absolutely. to ask something and thanks thanks to my fans in the days of jockstrap cowboys and you know, like uh, Camaro Cowboy and uh, Huge Cock and so all those songs. Yeah.
<laughs> Huge herd, cock herd is the rock. You know, for... So thanks, thanks to my beautiful fans out there, my super cool fans, the techie boys, game boys, and all you brilliant, brilliant, uh, you know, wizards of the future, you know, mega billionaires and game creators and you know so we all go up together and we can all have fun with this technological marvel called the internet and uh, you know creativity Definitely. absolutely I just, I just like to thank everyone for tuning in we're going to pretty much close the stream out now <clears throat> thanks for uh, ask, asking grant questions and participating uh it gives me great joy to know that you guys are having fun with the music out there so i'll you know, try to, uh, you know, use some imagination up there in space and uh, check into the ranch occasionally on those uh, Ram Ranch Cowboys. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Evidently, they're being butt-fucked all the time by the Black Cock Gang. I don't know what's going on <laughs> down there. The U.S. Marines and now the U.S. Uh, Space Force are coming onto the cock ship like, Yo! <laughs> Huge Jared Cox heard his rocks like, Yo! <laughs> So hey, been an honor to to, to speak with you. Uh, you know, here's Aaron in Australia, thirteen hours difference. You know, and we're communicating through Discord and the web and communicating, and having fun. So gee whiz, all I can do is to say thanks for you know supporting my music and and sharing yeah. it and having fun, having fun and being proud of who you are. Definitely. Yeah, this will be uploaded on YouTube. So if anyone wants to, anyone missed it. They'll prove I'm able to check it out. Yes. Well, Thank thanks, Aaron. Thank uh, you Aaron again, Angel. Grant. Okay, Thank so you, brilliant. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I personally stream every day, so I'll be here tomorrow. But thank you. Appreciate it. Goodbye.